I first became interested in pursuing robotic surgery, um, around 2001, I was uh, a couple of years out of fellowship at that time, and uh, it was just an interesting situation where uh, the urologist in the room next to mine, who was he was an endourologist, he'd come over to my OR and asked me to look at this new technology. And at that time, it was the Da Vinci surgical system. It was the only robot that had been FDA approved to use in humans. And he said, come look at this, come check this out. And I walked into his room, sat down, looked inside, and immediately had an epiphany that this was going to be something that was, that was going to transform not only surgery as a whole, but, but specifically transform GYN surgery. And so um, at that point, I said, you know what? I know nobody's looked to apply this to GYN surgery, but uh, I think there's going to be a role here. And that's really where I first became interested. It's exciting to see where everything has gone. Um, it brings back a lot of memories, especially seeing uh, Manny Menon here, because when he was starting out at the Henry Ford, I was starting out at the University of Michigan, and I think we lived sort of parallel lives just down the street from each other, but to see where everything's gone over the last 20 years is really exciting. It was really just um, another colleague who also himself was just starting to learn about the robot, and of course he was looking at it for prostate surgery, and I immediately looked in there and thought, my gosh, this would be great for uterine surgery, for reconstructive surgery in the pelvis, and uh, the rest is history after that. The journey in the beginning was very interesting because, first of all, I was only a couple years out of fellowship, so I was a really young attending at the time. And to bring up this notion of using a robot in a patient, especially to do things like fertility enhancing or fertility sparing um, gynecologic surgery sounded almost heretical. Um, I remember taking a lot of heat for that and, and I don't know whether it was just because of my youth and naivety and the sense that I, I personally didn't feel like I had a lot to lose in terms of, you know, I hadn't built a career on one particular modality of surgery. I was pretty open to all routes and I was really trying to think forward and innovative, uh, innovatively, but uh, it was scary. I mean, it, it was scary because there were, there were no other individuals to lean on at that time, you know. I mean, today it's so well established. There are mentors and, you know, I've trained in my career, I, I've trained probably about 20 fellows now over the years um, that spend, you know, two, three years with me at a time learning uh, minimally invasive surgery and specifically robotics. But, you know, when you rewind the clock backwards, um, we were, we were, by ourselves in that sense, um, doing, doing innovative and sort of paradigm changing surgeries. And so it, it was a little bit of a scary place because I didn't really have anybody that I could, could talk to about troubleshooting. If you were encountering an issue robotically, you really had to figure it out. Um, and it, would, it, it took years before there were others who came on board who you could collaborate with. And then, and then it became a lot more fun because then you had colleagues and peers that you could, you know, really work through problems with and innovate with and do studies with and, and that's really where things started to take off. As you can see here, teamwork is, is ultimately what this is all about. And you can see that the, the stamp mark there, uh, when I trained in November of 2001, uh, that's when I started robotic surgery, I teamed up with a GYN oncologist who I convinced um, to, to look at this technology and I took three of my best nursing staff and all five of us did our training together and by doing so what it did is it allowed us to be able to as a team understand what it means to use the robot both from a, a, a nursing standpoint, a circulator standpoint, bedside assistant and console surgeon perspective. I'm going to see if I can go to the next quote here. You know, one of the quotes I love is this one by Babe Ruth, who's a famous baseball player in America. And basically, the way a team plays as a whole determines its success. You can have the greatest bunch of individual stars, but if they don't work well together, the club won't be worth a dime. And that's very much true in an operating setting. You can have the most talented surgeon in the world, but if the rest of the team is not on the same page, 
doesn't work. You know, it, it's interesting. In the beginning, when I went to meetings, it was almost looked upon as a, like a like a like a novelty or a, like a magic trick. That, you know, there was an interest to say, invite that young surgeon over to the meeting, let him present his stuff because there was some interest there. But what started to happen is that as as the the, the novelty and the newness of it started to kind of go away and the seriousness of its applicability and the fact that there are a lot of people who really began to earnestly want to evaluate and incorporate this into their practice. As that grew, then the establishment began to push back quite a bit. And yes, there was quite a bit of resistance in the early days, absolutely, and to the point that I would be at meetings presenting and um, I very vividly remember one of the first times that I presented at a meeting. One of my close, close friends and, and, and mentors professionally had invited me to present at one of the lar larger GYN surgical meetings and he didn't warn me that I would likely get skewered alive up there on the stage and, uh, and I did. I mean people basically accused me of doing substandard care and that I was harming women by using a robot. I mean to that degree of, uh, of, of um, wording and I remember coming off the stage and sitting next to him and I said God that was just brutal and he's like well I, I said why didn't you warn me about this and he says well if I would have told you what it was going to be like you wouldn't have showed up at the meeting so he believed in me that much that he he, be, he didn't do robotic surgery but he believed that it was going to be changing the way we operate and was going to be the future that he knew that it was the right thing to continue to allow that to be a discussion point at the meetings but uh, yeah, those early days were interesting. I guess what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, you know, at the end of the day. But, and I, I look fondly back on that. I, I, I don't, um, I, I am surprised sometimes that I survived it, uh, all that negativity, especially early in my career. Um, I guess I just was more stubborn than anything else. And I think the more people pushed back and were attacking you, uh, I think the more I dug my heels in and said, you know what, we're going to do this the right way and we're going to make this work. And, uh, but, you know, wouldn't change anything. You know, having gotten to know Dr. Bandari through the years, it's um, I laud their efforts to really help disseminate. You, you you need catalyst in the world to disseminate. You know, not only technology and innovation, but just just the knowledge to support that technology. You know, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel, uh, and so to be able to accelerate that with the you know with the Vatacuti Foundation, that you know they really have. Uh, you know, I believe. Um, you know, succeeded in their mission, you know, to propagate this because you, you need those kind of catalysts. And I think, in, you know, in my opinion, they, that's what they've served as catalyst um, and, and connectors. They connect people, which is really important in terms of just creating that network globally. I always crack up when people ask me, what is the future of robotic surgery? And I always say, well, the, the future is already here. Um, you know, robotic surgery is not something that we just talk about as a, you know, we think it's going to do something. It's, it's been around for over 20 years, and so uh, it's definitely uh, a fabric of our, um, of our practices. It's, it's part of that fabric. It's a part of our surgical armamentarium. Uh, what I do see happening is just further refinement. You know, that's, that's really what we're seeing now. It's, it's, it's integrating other modalities into the robotics platform. It, it's bringing in artificial intelligence. It's bringing in um, a streamlining of the technology and, and just we have a better understanding now of, of where else it can go, you know, in terms of applying it to different types of pathology and different types of specialties. Mm -hmm.